Krishna says, of course you will attain success in this yoga by constant practice. However, this yoga is not for him who eats too much or eats too little. It is also not for him who sleeps too much or who keeps awake all the time. So this is simply a metaphorical presentation of moderation in everything. Moderation in activity, moderation in meditation, moderation in sleeping, moderation in eating. I think among these the most difficult two is moderation in eating and moderation in sleeping. We are very attached to these two things. And I think if you have moderation in eating, it, you can also moderate sleep. You just think of having a full, great meal. You know, feel like sleeping. So give it a break. See? Before, my master uh, instructing me on how to eat food and not eat too much or too little, he said, when you sit to eat, get up before you feel you're full. Normally what we'd like to... You know, so. And then if you do that every day after a while, it'll become like Ganesha. So, not words for human beings, okay? So, moderation in eating, moderation in sleeping. So, which means that there should be moderation in everything. It, it's not written here, but also in speaking. There should be moderation in speaking and moderation in listening. If somebody is talking nonsense, don't go away, listen for some time. And then go. There should be moderation in every activity. You should walk, of course, for the body, physical exercise, but don't keep walking for miles. There should be a moderation in everything. So Krishna says here, success in yoga will be definitely attained by the yogi who moderates all his activities in life. Neither it's too much or it's too little or sleeps too much or sleeps too little. Yukta hara viharasya Yukta chetastu karmasa Yukta sopna avabodhasya Yoga bhavanti dukkha For one who is temperate in food also temperate in viharasya, recreation. Krishna is saying, you can watch TV, but don't watch TV all your time. There was no TV then. I'm not sure if there was no TV then, because it seems to have been something. Because when the Gita starts, um, the king who is blind, who sits in his palace, cannot see the battle. So he asks his assistant, his secretary, Sanjay, I think he's his IT assistant. To um, he asks him, who is also sitting in the palace, Sanjaya, tell me what's happening out there in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Hmm? What's happening? Interesting. The old man says, what's happening to my people and what's happening to the Pandavas? Pandavas. <laughs> And he asked Sanjaya, what's happening there? Can you tell me? And apparently there is some device because Sanjay sits down and looks at the screen and says, this is happening, this is happening. So there might have been TV. I don't know. <laughs> Something was there. <laughs> Unless Sanjay saw it in his intuition. I don't know. But something was there. Dharma Kshetri, Guru Kshetra, Kshetri, Samveda Yutsava. Mama Kam Pandavas Cheva Kim Guruvate Sanjaya. What are they doing, Sanjaya? Tell me. Uh, so he explains. Here he says, don't watch TV too much. No, he doesn't use the word TV. I am saying this. Or there's no need to not watch because you might not know the weather tomorrow. But now you don't need TV. Google. Don't get too caught up in it. Little bit entertainment is good for us, but not too much. So, 
the yogi who is temperate in food and recreation, who is detached and self-restrained even while working, who has regulated his sleep and wakefulness, such a yogi, through constant practice of meditation, brings about the cessation of samsara, of the cycle of birth and death, coming and going, coming and going. This is interesting. In a place called Orcha on the banks of the river Betwa, we were having a satsang. So I said, so this is how one should get rid of the cycle of birth and death. And so then you don't have to come back. And the lady who was 85 years old said, but I want to come back. I enjoy the dal roti and the sabji and traveling. Why shouldn't I come back? I want to come back. So what is this moksha? Why is it preventing me from... So I said, no point. You come back to me when you're ready for it. So, and therefore when such a mind, which has become tranquil, which sits in solitude and meditates within, such a mind is able to remain established when every other activity of the mind has ceased in the Atman alone, in the true self. And then, is free from longing for all objects of desire, such a person is said to have attained the Supreme. Even if you lecture on the Brahman, you have not attained the Supreme until the Gita says your mind has completely settled down and is not caught up by the objects of the senses or the attractions and its deep calmness it's in touch with the inner self called that. It has nothing to do with scholarship or... In fact, too much of uh, knowledge may be a hindrance to understanding this. Could act as a hindrance. That's why the Upanishad says, both Vidya and Avidya have to be abandoned. Not only Avidya, Vidya also. Because then, usually when we know too much and when we learn too much and have so much knowledge, even of scriptures, the ego also builds up and becomes huge, you cannot control. And it's the ego that's the root of all our problems. If that is not there, you've already reached there. I... Okay, I'll do that later. So. Yatha dipo nivathasto Engate sopama smrita yogino yata chittasya unjato yoga matmana. The beautiful comparison, beautiful figure, metaphor of a yogi's mind. A yogi's mind, says Krishna, is like the flame of a lamp sheltered from the wind and does not flicker. This is the comparison used to describe a yogi's mind that is united with the inner self. It's like a flame without wind. Unflickering flame. That state in which the mind, the thoughts and the mind stuff and all its movements come to rest through the practice of yoga. One experiences the joy of the spirit which one's experienced, one has no desire for any other joy. So when somebody says, I'm giving up everything, actually he's not giving up anything. He's giving up trinkets, mere trinkets, for the treasure which he's attaining.
in the joy of the inner self anyone who has even tasted it say the rishis you find that there is no comparison of such joy in anything in this world therefore you are not interested and once it is understood and experienced that joy is seen everywhere in the smile of a child in the cry of the suffering it's all there but first it has to be found within and then it can be seen outside also and in that the yogi sukham atyantikam tadyat putti grahyam atindriyam vetti yatra na jayavayam sthitas chalati tattvada in that the yogi experiences that endless bliss which the senses cannot understand or grasp which can only be felt by the mind that is pure and restful having attained that one does not waver from the truth one stays there now i'm going to skip a few because they're kind of repetitions the man of spiritual insight established in same sightedness same sightedness meaning the yogi sees the same in the self in all and therefore to the yogi everybody is god because when you say god the concept of god in vedanta is the spark of the divine which is in every heart we not talking about the physical heart center of consciousness and therefore such a yogi sees all living beings as walking talking moving temples of the divine therefore that person cannot cause harm to anybody will you destroy a temple where there is god inside and it's everywhere so therefore the man of spiritual insight enlightened in the same sightedness and established sees the self residing in all beings he who sees me in all beings and all beings in me to him i am never lost neither he loses me nor i lose him is krishna and then he says arjuna in my view that yogi is the best who sarvatra samam pashyati one who sees all as one who sees that all human beings all living beings are part of the same divinity and having perceived this feels the joys and sufferings of all as his own to lord one who sees the self divine self in all as his own self therefore shares in the joys and sufferings of others therefore when somebody is suffering he tries quickly to help them to get rid of it because it is also his own suffering and when someone is joyous he adds joy to it because it's also his own joy then arjuna has a problem again arjuna says o krishna call him madhusudana slayer of malu o krishna owing to the fickleness of my mind i don't know how to become firm in spiritual communion my mind is so turbulent and you are saying keep it like a flame 
without wind. But my mind is turbulent. I can perhaps control the wind, but I can't control it. So what do you say for that? Says you said all this, you gave me a big lecture. But my mind is fickle. You said it should be like a flame without the wind. I can control probably the wind, but I cannot control my mind. It's so powerful. It's a question like any one of us can ask. So what do I do about this now? I've heard what you said. And says, now Arjuna is feeling depressed, worried. His lower mind is taking over. He's worried. Yes. So Krishna wants to prep him up. So what does he call him? Mahabaho, oh mighty armed one. Throughout the Gita you'll find Krishna addressing Arjuna different titles, depending on his state of mind. Now he's down, he says, oh mighty armed one, so he can stand up. Huh? Great psychologist. So he says, Krishna says, Oh Mahabahu, mighty armed one, undoubtedly the mind is fickle, I understand, and difficult to be checked, right? Yet, O oh, son of Kunti, it can be brought under control by dispassion and spiritual practice. It requires practice. It requires dispassion to be practiced and it requires practical meditation to be practiced, both. And one keeps at it, one day it will definitely come under control. I accept that it is fickle. See, it's like this. Everybody, most people, are flowing with the stream in one direction. One person stands up in the middle and says, I want to swim against the current. It's not easy. But then what happens? Then through constant practice you learn to face it. So practice is important. And the development of the qualities of the mind which are discussed are also important. When both of them go side by side, then one is able to attain the tranquility of mind. What Krishna is saying is don't be in a hurry and understand that the mind is fickle. 